lovely live. I, I believe we are. It's showing that we're live. So uh, hello everybody and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Your got to be your number one source for uh, your weekly tech and gaming news. We are live. We are live. I saw it pop up mine as well. So as you can see, we're very professional as always. I'm to check our phones to see if we're actually live. Cause... Imagine if my shadow started like moving without me. How creepy that would be. I mean, yeah, that would be extremely like creepy. It wouldn't be as creepy for me, because unless it's going to come get me next. It's going to be one of those things where you have to stay in the light. <laughs> like... <laughs> something. <laughs> there is a film with Hayden Christensen yeah. in where, like... Star Wars. Where, no, not Star Wars. Yeah, he did fall to the dark side. Okay, let's uh, move on. So, uh... First one up. So first little news story is uh, Jack Black is going to be the voice of Claptrap in the Borderlands movie. Yeah, so, so should be good. Like like we said last week, Jack Black's not Jack Black. Borderlands has loads of like <laughs> famous people being in it. People mm. looking forward to. It. I think Jack Black would be a really good voice. He'd add a character to the annoying little mm -hmm. cuboid that is Claptrap. So yeah. what, who 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 did I mention last week? Names I can't pronounce. Uh, Kevin Hart. But, Kate Blanchett. Yeah, Kate Blanchett. Is that a real person? That is a real person. Um, and some other famous people. So it's it is wrapped <laughs> up to be, and it's directed by Eli Roth. Yes, yeah, so they're uh, star-studded cast. So it'll be interesting to see if they can maybe break the mold of uh, terrible computer game movies. I wonder if they'll put an effect on the camera because that's what made mm. Borderlands stand out when it first came out was the cell shading. They want to be Zelda Wind Waker like we all do. So they put the cell shading on, and that's what made, I think, Borderlands stand out. And then the game is really good. The mechanics are good and all the, like, the comedy. So it'll be, that'll, that'll be an interesting thing. Yeah, thing I hadn't even that. thought yeah, of that, but it, it it wouldn't be Borderlands without that. Yeah, exactly. So Almost like a cross between animation and live action somehow. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that could just be like a... I mean, you can get them on your phone, can't you, where you film and it turns you into, like, a cartoon, so... I did read that filming on their iPhone. Yeah. I thought so. so. Do you think they need us to consult with them? Maybe. We'll send all an AirPod each. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. We've got this nailed. So we are going to shoot the next Borderlands. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be absolutely amazing. In the history of game movies, what a good one, a good one, in your opinion... I, I don't know how much you would agree with this, but Resident Evil, because I, I didn't play the first game, so I thought uh, as a okay. film, yep. the first, Resident, first two were like good films, yep. I really liked them, I don't know how game lorry they were, game lorry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I liked them, so... I, I really enjoyed the first and the second film, it was like one of yeah, my... After, after that. After that, it was just like, what on earth is going on and to be fair in the first and the second one it was a bit what on earth is going on i almost prefer the first film because they vaguely based it on resident evil but not at the same time so it's its own thing. and then the second one seemed very much like a, oh we've had a lot of fallout and people want some more resident evil so let's throw some resident evil characters in there and then after that they just went off the rails completely i think for me um if a movie based on a film i i really enjoyed detective pikachu <laughs> I've still not seen it. What? Yeah, it's because it's never came out on Netflix. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Netflix it, or Amazon Prime, so... It's worth I, I a watch. watch. Yeah. It is, it's worth like a it. watch. Yeah, it's it's stupid, uh, but it's good fun. It's good fun. And Pokemon in live action, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I, I actually can't think of that many more gaming mm. films. Monster Hunter came out, which I've not seen. Yeah. Apparently it was awful, but I've not seen it, so I can't give my opinion. Yeah, World um, of Warcraft, that flopped. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot over the years where yeah. they attempt to do it and it just doesn't do well. I remember the first Silent Hill film being all right, from what I recall. Sean Bean? Yep, Sean one? Bean is in that. I never, I, and I, I, I still don't understand Silent Hill. I've never played a Silent Hill game. I've yeah, not either. I've not. Yep, so. Um, and then the film, I just. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Who knows? So. You know, Borderlands, the movie, might be good, might be terrible. We'll find out one day. Um, moving on. Oh, this one's this one makes me... So I I had a roller coaster of emotions when it came to this, because I saw the Kingdom of Hearts is finally coming to the PC. And I was like, oh my god, this is great. Kingdom of Hearts, all three of them, finally coming to PC. Yeah, yeah. 
I've, I've always wanted to play them. They look right up my street. It's a map. Just kind of a big mashup of Final Fantasy. Uh, my eye is twitching right now. That's really bad. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mashup of all Disney and Final Fantasy, and they're meant to be really good games. I got them on the PlayStation Three ages ago, but I never played the PlayStation Three really. So I was like, "Yes, this is great. Finally, going to be able to play them." And then yeah, I was massively let down. So if you are interested, it's coming out on 30th of March. Kingdom of Hearts for PC. It's an Epic Games exclusive, because of course it's an Epic Games exclusive. But worse than that, they cost 60 quid each. Each? Yeah, you could buy a PlayStation 3 and the Kingdom Hearts collection for probably the same price or less. Have they been remade at all, or are they literally nope. just... No, nope. wow. Yeah, exactly. Do you so, read out your actual notes for this, Sean? I won't read out my actual notes for this because uh, that would be bad. And yeah, I just so let down when I saw that. First off, Epic Games exclusive. You know what? No, I won't. I won't read out my notes. Um, <laughs> what, what annoys me about Epic is that Tim Sweeney sits there and he throws all the shade at the likes of Steam. And, and Apple and all these big companies and he says, you know, oh, it's, it's terrible. Consumers should have the right to choose and we need to make it a better world for consumers and we need to make it a better world for PC gamers and you know what, we don't want Steam to be able to monopolise. I don't think he understands what monopoly is. He's buying exclusives all the time. It's like PC game. And just, I, I, I don't like exclusives, but I understand them. When Sony puts money behind a studio to produce a game, okay, it makes sense that they're going to have some kind of exclusivity for that for a time period or whatever. But all he does is literally at the end of the development, games that were going to be coming to Steam don't because he buys them. He throws a ton of cash at them and gets them onto Epic Games. But worse than that, you know, they do all these free games and everything to entice people over to their platform. But their platform is absolute bollocks. It's still just so bollocks. I'm getting close to my notes. And it's just like, for God's sake... Win and keep consumers, win and keep customers by giving them a decent gaming platform. You're just giving them free stuff, buying all these exclusive games. It's just annoying the audience. Just shove off. I've got no no issue with that <laughs> games. Everything you've just said, you know, fair dues. Steam always had the monopoly. So epic or like pushing it. I don't really care about the actual program itself it is bad it's nowhere mm -hmm. near as good as steam it is a bad program like i don't care about achievements but like the store layout is dodgy yeah library layout is dodgy mm -hmm. everything about it just isn't as good as steam but i think steam just polished it but as for them having the exclusives yeah fair dues steam's probably got enough exclusives so i don't think they've really got any games that are exclusive to steam no oh. Even about, um, all the Valve-made games, they're all available oh. on other platforms. Fair. So, they still have, what, what, what's the market share between Steam and Epic? I mean, Steam is massive, and obviously it's massive yeah. because it's been around for donkey's years. But the thing that I disagree with is the amount of games that have been scheduled for release on all platforms, including Steam, and then Epic swoop in at the last minute, throw a ton of cash at them, and then people who've pre-ordered on Steam or pre-ordered with the developer direct to be able to use it on Steam then can't. I mean, that that is bad. It's, it's that sort of how things. much of that is, is that epic? I mean, it is epic. Often yeah, it money. Is. But is it the money people for the games company going? Mm. Oh, of course it is. It's both sides. The developers, yeah. well, but in the long run, it must be destroying so many developers because yeah, they get a ton of cash, but people that they frustrate and then suddenly lose. But yeah. It, ah. Kingdom Hearts is coming, so that's one part of the good news. You'll have to play it on Epic Games Store. Or, obviously, wait probably another year, and you'll be able to play it on a platform that you actually like. Or just wait six years to get both free on Epic. <laughs> probably not even six years. There we go. Probably in the first year or something ridiculous like that. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. swiftly. As soon as you buy it. Yeah, swiftly moving on. This one was so good, apparently, that we both had it in the notes there. Yeah, but I've, co I've combined the notes. Good. So there's more. Well, you you go with this because you actually have. Yeah, you have the information. I just kind of put. Woo. Yeah. So with with the demand of graphics cards just being <laughs> crazy right now, mm -hmm. Nvidia the unretiring, as Sean said, two old cards. So the RTX 2060 mm -hmm. and the GTX 1050 Ti. So 
2060 is obviously going to try to fill the void where the 30 series is, is mm. empty right now. But 1050 Ti, I thought, was quite an interesting one because it, it was never that much that good of a card, I thought. And then apparently it's one of their best sellers now, so they're, they're bringing it back. Yeah, I, I, and this is just mad. I, it, I mean, obviously, NVIDIA clearly know what they're doing or... You'd like to hope so. They're making so much money. but yeah. And at the same time, it's kind of moving on to one of our other points, but they've announced the 3060 recently, and they've just been on a non-stop machine gun fire of announcing cards and now unretiring two of their old cards, so the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1050 Ti. What does production even look like over there at the moment? How do you... What? I mean, this is what I was thinking as well, because, like... If if they're remaking the twenty sixty, mm. surely they can use that that area. To I do assume the it's to do with the tech inside of it. So with things like the thirty series moving to different types of processor and the newer RAM that's on the thirty series versus the older ten fifty Ti and the twenty sixty, they'll all be using different types of chips and everything. So. You could oh, have okay. a production line that's easy, more easily able to get hold of all the parts that go into a 2060 because it's been around for longer. I mean, it's just easier to source and get all the parts for that. And then a production line that's churning out 30 series. So I suppose that's yeah. probably yeah. it. Yeah, that makes sense. It, and it, but it does show how desperate people are at the moment to get mm. their hands on graphics cards because who in their right minds would pay I suppose full retail price or actually more than full retail price scalper price for an older card and in fact, yeah I, I don't get yeah, I don't get the 2060 because it is going to be like you said people will be paying more mm -hmm. than a 3060 Ti or maybe a, even 3070 for an older card so if someone yep. is that desperate for it, it it's the video like you said, clever. They're making their money. Mm, exactly. And they're, they're trying to do whatever they can to to get this stuff out there because the demand is so high. And I suppose as well it's down to miners because miners will buy whatever they can get if there's a return on investment. And something like a 1050 Ti, 2060, if they can pay decent enough cash to get it to then get their mining rigs upgraded, then, yep, yeah, they're going to do it. And I suppose even gamers at this stage now, if they can just get something that they can game on, you know, it really interestingly, the other day was looking because Chris is thinking of upgrading and getting a gaming laptop instead. And I jokingly said that he'd be able to sell his 2060 for more than he bought it for. And we had a look and it's going for a good couple of hundred pounds more than he bought it for. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever I've, looked at, I've got a 1070. I've looked at selling it and mm -hmm. I think I would get like 200, 250 for it. But like yeah. if I got a 3070 for it, it's a retail price that's yeah. only 400 so i'd only be paying 150 for a, a massive upgrade so it is it is crazy right now yeah so i mean if you it's actually look at uh, something like your 1070 on ebay i mean it's it'll be probably like four five hundred pounds yeah i've, I've don't tempt me don't tempt <laughs> you, me frodo don't tempt you i won't no you won't be able to, you'd have to do everything on geforce now What's uh, you? queuing for queuing for absolutely <laughs> So, hey guys, everyone ready, ready to game? Yeah, it, and it is crazy because I looked the other day at a 3080 because it's just, oh, do it. And it was, it was like £1,500 for an RTX 3080. £1,500 and then middle retail for what, six, seven hundred? It's even when you go on for like the uh, NVIDIA website and you go check available stock and it brings yeah. you to a website, you click on that website and mm. it's like an extra 300 on top of what they've said and it's out of stock. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, great. But I suppose at this stage, who's to blame? The scalpers or everybody who's buying at these prices? People must be, otherwise... Yeah. Wow. I think scalpers are still to blame. Oh, of course. Yeah, we, I think we had this yeah. conversation. We, we can't blame. blame. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. to blame. But oh my... And miners. Miners are to blame as well. Yeah, I hate kids. I know. <laughs> I blame Logan all the time. <laughs> so so moving on, this was another roller coaster bit of news because... I had quite a few roller coasters last week when it came to tech Your and gaming is news. Shop right it now. is. If I could only download an app to display my heart rate, Haley. Oh, don't burn me. Don't burn you. So um, I saw the obviously tech clans and Dying Light had some news. I was like, oh my god, you know, Liam had mentioned this like two weeks ago. I was like, oh, Dying Light 2 is finally going to be coming. So it popped up. It's like, yeah, Di Dying Light, a new announcement. I was like, okay, brilliant. Let's have a look at this. It's a Viking DLC for. 
the original one. Yeah, they they do bring out DLC. A lot of DLC. A lot. Yeah, like, a lot of it. All the time. <laughs> it, you know what? I've, I don't have Dying Light installed anymore because no one plays. Just, just bring out a new game. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. But, spend this DLC making on mm-hmm. the new game, guys, because no one's going to play it. Well, I, I'm sure. It's, a lot of people. I'm sure they will do. I, I assume that it's because the, cause I saw a lot of fallout from this and so many people were complaining and kicking off and just saying what you just said there. It's like, just bring out the second game, put the, those resources behind it. I just assume that they have a smaller team that works on DLC. Most studios do, and it tends to be that you have a main core team that works on one of the big releases and then they get moved on to the next project and then you have another team that's left behind working on DLC. So I assume it's that and it's just bringing in money because they need to bring in money because their game, their second one, is never going to yeah. be available at this rate. So I suppose by having some kind of DLC and this steady stream of it... But it's frustrating because there's so many studios that seem to do that and fall into that trap and I, it, I can't remember the name of the studio anymore. Something Star... The ones that made Payday. Oh, uh, no. no idea. In Payday 2 obviously came out and it was a very popular game and it had a massive player base, but it just seemed to be DLC after DLC after DLC after DLC and it just went on forever and then it got to the stage like, yep, Payday 3's coming. It's not now because they're basically fighting with bankruptcy. Because... Is, is this a purchase purchasable DLC or is it just like a skin? Because they do release lots of ones where it's like DLC. It's just yes, it's a purchasable one as far as oh, I'm okay. It looks as though it's like Viking zombies are invading. And... That does sound really good. <laughs> <laughs> I would enjoy that. I'm buying it now. Yeah, and, and it's probably well timed for them as well because Valheim's doing so well that you get a lot of people in the mood for Vikings. So it probably will do well and maybe we'll get it. <laughs> maybe we will. Dan and Chris have Dying Light, so we at least have some people to to play with. Yeah. But I just wish they would bring out the second one. I've said it numerous times. Just please. I'm pretty scared please. of the second one now. I just think it'll be, it, it won't live up to the hype. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they do. And that's It'll what be, I'm kind of go. hoping is the reason for it at the moment. That they've gone completely radio silent on it. They've announced that it's still coming, that it's still, you know, fine. And they're just not showing anything off. I just hope that they're, they're learning from so many of the other big studios, mm. you know, like Cyberpunk, that showed off a lot of stuff. And then when parts of it didn't happen in the game and everyone kicked off and had a hissy fit, they don't want to have the same thing. I wonder if they'll just do like a drop release. Like, oh, by the way, it's out. Fallout 4 style. Play it. Yeah, um, yeah. Bethesda it's... was like, look, here's uh, Fallout 4. By the way, you can buy it next week. And it's like, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? It... And one of the worst Fallout games there is, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's released quickly. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's semi-enjoyable. <laughs> Thank God for modders. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so moving on, so kind of back on to, we've mentioned this already, but the RTX 3060 is coming 25th of February. So we have a 3060 Ti. We now have a 3060, and what's that about? A 3060 Ti came out, and then a 3060. I think they need to get their naming sorted now because I have, I've generally confused. I think they probably have a calendar, and it's all been messed up. They're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. And yeah. they just not double checked it. They went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone's oh, marketing what? team did it, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. whoops, sorry, boss. What What's the 3060 going to do, and how much is it going to be? Do you know any of this information? Uh, it was a about 60 quid cheaper than the 3060 Ti. And it's much worse? It, much from worse. what I looked at, it was only... It's not that much worse. It's, it's going to be the... Re- yeah, we do need to research better. It, <laughs> I think it's because there's been so many graphics cards that no one can buy at the moment that it's almost like a, a non-issue. It's not actually released. It's vaporware. Yeah, do you think they weren't ever actually going to release it and then they're like, oh, we could still make money off this? We've we've sold out of other ones. Might as well. I have no idea. I, like I said, I have no idea what's going on at the moment with production because you know people must be get. I mean, they're clearly getting out there and they're clearly available. Just they're getting bought up in absolute bulk. As far as I was aware, the thirty sixty was going to be more just to replace the old twenty sixty. And the 3060 Ti was meant to be more of the professional rather than the gaming. Mm. And it had more VRAM than something like the 3070 and the 3080. So it was meant to be for more professional applications and video editing and stuff. Well, the thir- yeah, like 3060 the, has yeah. 12 gig. Yeah. And then the 3060 Ti and 3070 only has 8 gig. Oh, okay, so it's that way around. Yeah. Okay. So the 3060... 
yeah. just 300. Yeah, mental. Just just mental. One day you'll be able to buy a new GPU. So they are just announcing things left, right, and centre. And apparently, rumours and everything are saying that the 3080 Ti is about to be announced. They they went insane. They're just milking this horse for all it's worth. But it just, milking it, this horse? It, no. <laughs> you don't don't milk a horse, <laughs> Liam. It's, it's... I've made that mistake before. It's it just mad because I just think you, you could get... So once demand starts to die down, that's when you release a new product. Yeah. I mean, if this comes out with £300, and because I've got, like I said, I've got 1070, I'd be tempted, but not tempted enough to queue for ages. You just won't be able and to buy, buy it. it. I'm definitely not, no, definitely not going to get scalpers to, to get it. Do you reckon no. this would be more of a minor one again? Yeah, potentially. With more RAM? God I don't know. Yeah, they almost need to bring out the old minor cards. I think it was AMD did a whole series of purely mining cards and didn't have any video outputs on it. Oh, really? Mm, just to kind of take it away. But uh, the whole thing's a mess at the moment, and I guess it's a mess right across the board in terms of anything mm. to do with gaming. It's not just mining. It is demand as well. So, yeah. aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Right, next one's you. Good news, good news. Good news. You know, there's usually lots of negative news with us, I've realised, but <laughs> I mean, we like to bring everyone a free game. So Sean and I personally went out we went to his favourite place, Steam, and um, we asked, we paid millions and millions of pounds to give everyone a free game. So we were here, it's a free game until the 28th of February. Um, it's a two player puzzle indie game. So it does look quite interesting. Like Sean and I might play in a bit where you both solve them puzzles, but you have to be in different areas. So you can't see what the person's doing. Um, it's free until the 28th of February, like I said, but you do need to buy it and download it before the 28th of February, but then it's free forever and you've got it in your library. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome, world. You're welcome. You're welcome. We didn't buy yeah. it. We didn't buy it. If we, if we were going to buy Where something, did... we would buy Where's Liam a microphone. We would buy Liam a microphone. Got a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's... doesn't have a microphone on it. You know, rather than just his AirPods. What happened to the money I sent you, Sean? I spent it on... A million pounds. A million pounds. I bought oh, a 3070. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> yeah. Bargain. Where is it? It's... I don't know. Logan took it. it. It's very. Good news, bad. I did. I'm Logan. sorry. I'm terribly sorry. So, yeah, free game. It's, it does seem to be a bit of a theme lately. There's a lot of free games available. And it's still the Steam sale and the Epic Game yeah. Store sale as well. Have you bought anything? Um, I bought a game which wasn't on sale. <laughs> You know what we're getting. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, that's Fall true. Yeah. 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 I also bought that. I also got Spyro. I said that I wanted to get that. Yes. Yes. So I played that with Logan the other day and he very much enjoyed it. Did you get Vampire? Yes. I also got Vampire, which I, I'll be doing. I, I'm going to play it through and I hope I'll <laughs> you play sound it really through. excited about it. Um, so I'll do a review. I'm enjoying it. There's a lot of things to like. There's probably more things to dislike about it than there are to like about it it's i feel like they went too almost too open world again with it like it that would be a good more linear, linear game. yeah yeah definitely when it's, I played it. from what i've played of it so far and if you haven't played it, it's basically i guess a more gothic london type thing set at the time of the um not the plague spanish flu Mm -hmm. There we go, Spanish flus, and yeah, it's interesting. It, graphically, it looks pretty good, but there's loads of jarring yeah. things in it that are just frustrating. Like it's flashbacks and memories are just weird the way they're all presented, and yeah, it's it's quite. I got a few hours in, um, and I feel like it, it it could be really enjoyable, but the gameplay it just doesn't it just yeah. doesn't do something. Whereas the story bits of it, I was really liking. <laughs> Yeah, but I just I just can't be bothered to to, to chow through it. It's going to sound ridiculous, but it does not make you feel like a vampire. No, at all. Whereas, yeah, it yeah kind of. Right. I was hoping that it would be kind of vampire bloodlines, masquerades, to sort of scratch that itch until the next ones come out because they did a pretty good job at making you feel like a vampire. And in this world where there were rules and things you had to follow, whereas this just feels like your main character who is just kind of walking around trying to solve the mystery mm. rather than actually being a vampire yeah is there that much stealth in it i don't remember i think it's i hope not because I, I don't like stealth there's definitely a lot of action just 
I no. think a, fam- a vampire stealth game would be amazing. Mm. Hiding in the shadows, fighting with brutish werewolves. I'm letting out my werewolves. own. There we go. Are you, are you building my, your own game? My own right bias here. <laughs> nice. Yes. Nice. I need to take note. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. Steam sales and Epic Games Store sales still on, and obviously audience. What games have you bought in that? I've been pretty controlled. I've been really controlled. Oh. Only, only the three, and one of those was because we we're all getting it. Yeah, and um, wasn't even on set. And it's early access. Yeah, so yeah, we're, exactly. we're doing the developer a favour. Speaking <laughs> of which, speaking of which, moving swiftly on. So Valheim has had the biggest launch for a survival title on Steam, which is. I think it's also just broken some of the records for the most concurrent players in a game. Oh, really? Mm. Wow, that's a big game. Yeah, really big. It's doing, doing very, very well at the moment. And it's, if, when you hear survival, open world, and early access, it immediately makes me think, no, absolutely not. No, get out of the way. Not touching yeah. it with a 10-foot barge pole because those games just tend to be basic crap and stay in early access we, we got valheim because we discussed that we wanted to play something different than just the generic shooters that we keep <clears> on <throat> always playing and so far i really like it it's such a charming fun little game and the building side of it is just it's very addictive it's it's, it's very well made it's like low mm. poly graphics because there's that much you can do. Like, if the graphics are good, can you imagine your computer? Mm. Like, can you imagine what it would do to it? Um, I was reading that. It's just before this. It's got over 200 million purchases. Yep. At the height of the Vikings, in general, as people, in like 1300 AD, there's only like 500,000. Well, there's there only you half go. a million. So there's a lot more Vikings in the game than it was in real life. Mm. Uh, but it is for music. I said this to you, and I don't think you agreed with me. But to me, it reminds me of walking around. The wilderness of Morrowind, you know, when you just kind of walk in and he's got that nice little quaint. Charming. I think I know what you mean in the, in the theme of it rather than it remind. It sounds like one of the songs from it or tracks. You probably remember Morrowind more than I do, but <laughs> yeah, I, I did, it just it's just relaxing and you're there and you get attacked every now and then and you're like, nah, I'll get rid yeah. until the forest moves. I, and, and it's interesting the fact that. It, it's almost like World of Warcraft met a survival open world game. Because when I first booted up, I was just like, I expected it to be bad graphics, but it looked awful. But actually, mm. when you're in game, it looks, there's some bits that look really stunning. It's and, really charming as well. Yeah, and then you go out and you do all this. It's not just about go and gather this and then go do this. You actually want to venture out and find all these different mines and tombs and you're fighting different creatures. And the survival aspect of it isn't really there it's there to an extent in the fact yeah. that some of like your stats get debuffed <clears throat> if you're wet for example or if you're cold but it's not like oh my god my character's hungry again let me just go and eat it's just you start your day off your character eats some food and it buffs your health i feel like i've seen i've watched a few streamers play it as well mm-hmm. they play single player and they've got really far in it i don't understand how well they've done in it but playing with a group like we are is so much more fun yep like, Absolutely. We, we, set up, we set off in like all with each with a task. And right now, Sean, look at him. He's obviously the lumberjack. Mm-hmm. So he's cutting wood. I am. We got like Dan and Chris building bases. I'm trying to make a prison. Whoa, I've been building that base too now. I've got my built the dungeon. I've built a big sort of restaurant that overlooks the river. I've now started building a wall. It's beautiful. Yeah, Sean has went very Trumpy. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's not pretty. He puts his wig on. <laughs> while he's playing it's not a pretty game um but yeah it is it's just it's just good yeah that's really all i can say about it it does make me crave and i've said this before it really makes me crave more from it though i would love that meet something like age of empires where you get villagers that come and you slowly expand and you get like a blacksmith and you send out your farmers and your gatherers and i don't know how that would work but I almost it it, it you, I you want that. Game, I'll make my game. There we go with werewolves and vampires. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. They're all balded. So, yeah, damn right. I mean, I feel that passionately about this. I almost want to look at how you'd make a game, but I shouldn't because no. a. I'm pretty sure we've looked at making a game before as well, and we both gave up. Yeah, but I think we just looked at the really basic stuff. Yeah. Um. It, it's something I would absolutely love to do, but to be fair, 
my knowledge of that sort of stuff to do with anything in coding or yeah and just finding yeah, time no idea even where to start i i feel as though i'm already at the maximum i could possibly stretch my time without dying i mean go for it then plus i do it yeah. <laughs> so yes i'm, I'm not gonna i don't want you to die <clears throat> but yeah let's know is it easy to make a game <laughs> <laughs> in the comments let us know because i would love to make that game it's not going to happen and though it, it so. is easy help us help us yeah us. help us uh moving on to one of our final points so apple are offering free repairs to owners of the apple watch if it's refusing to charge so basically a new software update came out took away the ability for the apple watch to charge nice I didn't even know that's a new software out, to be honest <clears throat> No, oh, I didn't either. But, I mean, to be fair, the Apple Watch does a pretty good job at just updating in the background. So some users have been caught and part of the software, I don't know if it must have been corrupt or something else to do with it. It's caused a conflict where the Apple Watch just won't charge once it goes into standby mode. They've issued another software fix to stop this from affecting users, but obviously some have got to the stage where they can't uh, update their Apple Watch now because yeah. it's dead. So... Mm. I mean, that's that's like all right solution to a problem which shouldn't have happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I suppose right now, like, most people in lockdown, they don't need that watch too much. But imagine if you were one of those people that needed it in case you had a four or something, mm. and you're like, oh, I need, need to return this. And how long is that going to take? Yeah, but worse is just this is the sort of thing where I think that everybody who has an Apple Watch also has an iPhone. And chances are, if they're using an Apple Watch, it means they must pretty much have an iCloud account. Where was my email that said this? As an Apple Watch user who uses an iPhone, they have all of my details, they know that. Where, Apple, is my email or notification to say, by the way, if you encounter this problem, get in contact here, we'll replace it. Because I can pretty much guarantee that most people who run into this won't know. And they will just... I not mean, yeah, to... I didn't know before I read notes for this. Do you want me to phone Tim Cook? If you could, if you could get on the blower to him. <laughs> I'll call him off my Samson. <laughs> just, just to rip salt in the wound. But it is true. These sort of things but frustrated like me because it is like, yeah. yeah, oh, it's great. They're doing the right thing. It's like, no, they're, they're doing the legal thing. That's what they have to do. Mm. It's, it's a law that if their software breaks or bricks a device, they have to replace it. It's not just, oh, they're being nice and choosing to. It's something they're obligated to. But it shouldn't be a case of, oh, actually, I, I read tech news, so therefore I know this. It should be a case of, it's come through to my Apple ID. Yeah, like they, surely they, they can just send a notification as well to you. Like, not even can. an email, just be like... Even in the Watch app, stuff stop there should be yeah. something in there that when you go into it, a notification at the top, they can bake that into it to notify their customers that, by the way, you've got this Apple Watch and this software's just gone through to it. We've noticed it's not charged. They, they could do something that would tell yeah. their customers that, right, okay, sorry, we, we've screwed up. Get in contact with us and we can sort it out for you. But no, how many people are going to sit there and go, well, my Apple Watch doesn't work anymore, it's broken, just going to have to leave it, or buy a new one? You know what? I'm, I'm, this is really selfish. I'm glad I'm not working in a shop right now. I'm glad we because can you imagine the amount of people that would go into a retail shop and be yep. like, my watch isn't working, you demand mm -hmm. me a refund. And you'd be like, no, you have to contact yeah. Apple. And like, where, where I work, like there's not an Apple store nearby. Yeah. So you'd be like, yeah, you have to contact Apple. Um, they, you'll probably send that one away. They'll send you a new one. It'll be fine a week or so. Like yeah. you, the amount of stress, not only to the people who this is affecting, but then mm -hmm. like trailing it along would be really annoying. Yeah. yeah, and just to be clear, I don't think it's a massively widespread issue. I don't. It's not like everybody's Apple yeah. Watch bricked itself overnight and couldn't charge anymore. It is. You know, it's on. It's only I think on the latest Apple Watch, the Series Six and the SE, are yet. So you could be you. It could be you next, Liam, on specific software. And there, it's only a very small percentage of it. But still, absolutely, companies should be doing, especially when they have the ability to. They should be doing more. You know, I, they they should. There should be definitely something in there. But can mm -hmm. you imagine for widespread panic if they sent a notification to everyone with an Apple Watch going? Just let you know, we might break your watch. Like, <laughs> there'll be some some Deirdre out there who'll be like, 
oh poo <laughs> like, well, my watch is going to break like, no, but it's what I mean though have problem. it in the watch app because if your watch no longer works and you start going what's wrong with this let me try and repair it you're going to open the watch app and then there could be a notification in there or something or when your watch app doesn't detect your Apple watch for 24 hours or however long because it, it can't then there yeah, could be an automated solution. thing that says you know what this person they, they've not paired their Apple watch for a little while something's clearly wrong and it's probably us breaking their watch yeah. so we should that's a good solution them. well done Sean exactly there we go I have fixed back. it there we go Apple if you want to uh, give me a job no, no you, you want to work I don't act like you don't want to work for Apple you, you can buy my solution off me that's that's fine <laughs> hey, trade uh, market hey, trade market it's like you where you steal all the different products that already exist and claim them as your own idea I don't want to talk about this, Sean. Okay, I'm sorry. Not, I shouldn't have brought that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think we should round it out with a... Uh, Liam had an interesting argument against me earlier because I was talking about GeForce Now. And obviously, if you've been watching anything on the YouTube channel at the moment, you know we've been doing a, a lot of stuff with NVIDIA GeForce Now. I really like... I should put this pen down because I'm clicking a lot. I really like <laughs> cloud gaming and streaming and everything to a mobile phone or to an iPad. I just think it's it's great. It's really fun. And Liam's like, I don't see the point. I don't, I don't understand. Why would you want it on a phone? Yeah, I just think the phone, the screen's too small. And one of your arguments was, yeah, it's easy. I've got my, I've got my phone. I've got my controller. It's easy. It's all handheld. My, what my argument was, <laughs> now you've brought it back up, is <laughs> just having it on your phone. Can you imagine playing something on this touch screen, like a modern... Even playing Stardew Valley on that would be a struggle. And that's got an iOS app. Yeah, that's not what I said. But no, what I was saying is why play it just on your phone? Because why not? It's easy. You literally just press the app on your phone and you've got your controller with a clip. And it's it's and my argument was the Nintendo Switch exists. The Lite has a smaller screen than my iPhone. Yeah, but the issue with Nintendo is they have their good games. Like, the reason Nintendo Switch did so well is because they have Nintendo games. That's yeah, that. yeah, but there's cool a lot stuff. of third-party games now that have come across and been extremely popular as well, and it works. And a lot of games... And th by the way, this came up because I was talking about that in future we're going to be doing GeForce Now game reviews, which basically focus on the iPhone version of it and whether or not it's playable on a smaller screen, and the tablet version of it and whether or not it works well on a tablet, and then just the general experience of using it on GeForce Now. Because some games are absolutely awful, like Chaos Bane, for example. The text is too small. You c it's just unplayable on a mobile phone, but on an iPad, it works really well. But there are so many games, like I'm playing Vampire at the moment on my iPhone Pro Max, and it's perfectly playable. It looks great. I just think, I mean, I don't have kids, so I don't have any obligations. I can understand yeah. why a human loser like yourself would, <laughs> <Wow>. want, <laughs> would, would want it. But I just, I just think, one, I've, I've knocked a phone before mm -hmm. by using it too much and like, like intensive things like that, yeah. damaging the battery. Two, I don't have a controller like that. You're, you're buying yeah. extra things to make it work. Like if you just for phone, it's not going to work. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Tablet, I'm more inclined for mm -hmm. because it's a bit of a bigger screen yep. and you've got more room for the controls. But, but it, it's, I suppose it's the whole. And if I had, like you said, you played for three hours earlier. Yeah. But this is this is when I thought of, of your kids, to be honest. Like, if I had three hours to play it, I would just play on the computer. Yeah. So, um, when I first first thought about it, I was thinking of like being in a hotel, not having any, anything. Yeah, I mean, I didn't play for three but, hours okay. straight. What? Oh, okay. That's a yeah, so I mean, but again, it's easy because I can literally pick it up, play for half an hour, and then turn it off and go back to it. Whereas it, it's just convenient, I think, and that's why the Switch does so well. It's a convenient device that yeah. you can just pick up, play a game, and then stop, and then pick up and go again. Whereas getting sat down at my desk, I just I can't because there's there's children, children. and you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically interrupting. But I suppose everything. you don't have to queue, do you? No, no, it's a well, not it. Worse, it. The times I've tried it. Yeah, you've had a queue on it. But for me, yeah. it, it works perfect on the iPhone. There's literally no lag or latency or anything like that. So it's just like I'm playing the game on my iPhone. And battery issue, I wouldn't worry too much about that because you're not running the game on the phone. You're literally streaming. It's like watching a YouTube video. Mm, I suppose, but, I mean, when I did... Damage my phone is just from watching lots of videos. Well, there you go, because so. you're a terrible, terrible person. So, yeah, I'm yeah. young. 
it, shut up. <laughs> it, it, I think it's one of those things. It's going to suit different people for different reasons. I just really like GeForce now. I think it's a really good service. It has major flaws as well in the fact that this game's library just can get pulled at any moment. But game streaming, I think it's a great idea and... Hopefully, we will see more of it in the future. That's just why it came wrong. up. I think it's a good idea. Mm. I just think, like, do it playing on your phone in your house, to me, yeah. doesn't doesn't make sense. Yeah, there that's are a lot of people. That, that tends to be the big argument against it. I always see it in the comments, and I always see it on forums. It's like, well, why? why if you've got the hardware or if you've got the game, why don't you play on your PC? And I suppose for a lot of people now, they might not have the PC because you don't necessarily need it, or you might have sold your graphics card yeah. hoping you're going to get a new one, and you can't. <laughs> so there is that. But then, like I said, just for certain convenience factors of being able to play it, it's like, well, why would you ever play on Nintendo Switch then if you could just sit down and play on a full-fledged console or a PC? Yeah. There's times yeah, I think where you just I, want to. If I worked away from home yeah. and I was staying in hotels regularly, then it would be perfect. Absolutely yeah. perfect if the hotel Wi-Fi is good. But yeah, it, it's, it's I'm, I've got a warped mind right now because of the lockdown. <laughs> like, yeah. everything is in these four walls like, That's it. Out. the outside world doesn't exist anymore no like genuinely scary out there it's yeah, so terrifying dark now as well. it is yeah dark and horrible it's the perfect time to get developing our new game <laughs> vampire age of empire age um, of valheim vampires balding balding yeah, like werewolves it. It Nice. Well, that's a horrible sight. <laughs> that is a very horrible sight. So that is all we have for you this week. So, um, yeah, obviously, any questions or anything else that you'd like us to pick up and next week, let us know in the comments. And tune in next Tuesday, 8 o'clock. For our game. We'll be playing our game next Tuesday. We're going to attempt it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, our game. Yes, because Liam yeah, yeah. is going to make it. Liam is going to make it. And he's going to play it on GeForce now because... It's going to be an Epic yeah. Game Store I'm exclusive. I'm going to use this PC here. Uh -huh. to play here. Nice. <laughs> nice. On my phone. Brilliant. And it's only available on Epic? Yeah. yeah. Nice, okay. Actually, it's going to be only available on GOG. Uh, <laughs> uh, on that note... DRM-free. That's all we got for Bye. you. Bye. Bye.